Hi, this is Greg Benz with another luminosity masking tutorial. In this demo, I want to show you how you can take an image that looks like this, this uh, highly contrasty image of Antelope Canyon in Arizona, and turn it into this final image here, which has a lot more uh, intrigue and interest, and we've brought in the highlights and shadows to create a much more balanced image. And we're going to do this using luminosity mask in Photoshop, but uh, the journey starts in Lightroom. So here's the original raw exposure. Obviously, uh, the top of the canyon here is really blown out and the foreground shadowed rock um, is, is pretty close to black. So huge range of contrast. Um, I shot raw and I wanted to bring as much detail back as I could. And by just adjusting highlights and shadow, I was able to bring back uh, the blown out highlights and get a lot of detail on the rock. So Lightroom's done an amazing job here, um, but it still doesn't have everything I want. Um, so we're gonna blend some images. Um, I did make a couple of other adjustments here. I added a little clarity and vibrance um, as well as adjusting uh, my noise reduction and removing chromatic aberration. So typical adjustments that I would make in Lightroom before I start to blend the images with luminosity masks. So we've got these settings here and then here is our lighter exposure. It's one and a third stops lighter. Um, I have the exact same settings on it. You don't necessarily need to do that, but I tend to do that. Um, especially with clarity to make sure things line up pretty well. Um, so I'm just going to simply select these exposures and we'll send them over to Photoshop by choosing Edit In and then Open as Layers in Photoshop. And so in doing that, Lightroom is now kicking these over to Photoshop. It's just going to take a minute to load up. It's going to put them as uh, just two different layers uh, in the same image. And now these are not going to be aligned. I mentioned I was shooting handheld. Uh, Antelope Canyon is just very, very busy. And shooting with a tripod is next to impossible uh, in certain places, certain times of the day. So I shot handheld, did the best I could here. Um, Photoshop is not going to align these when you open as layers. So we still have to do that. So once this is open, I'm going to select both layers and we use the auto align tool in Photoshop, which I find does a really nice job of uh, of typically lining up the images so all right and so i just select both here i'm going to choose edit auto align layers click on that the auto is the best option so i just hit that and it's now automatically going to shift and twist the image as needed to get it to line up so it'll correct for rotation and other little things i might have done and I just kind of check the alignment on this by turning the layer on and off and it looks properly aligned to me. And I am gonna quickly just crop the edges here because the alignment has given me a little bit of kind of white edge because one image had to move relative to the other. So we'll just bring this in and use that crop there. So now I've got my aligned layers, I'm ready to go. Um, I've got the uh, the, the brighter image on bottom, the darker image on top, which is the way that I like to set this up. It's uh, much more simple to use light masks and darken the image than to do the opposite with dark masks. Um, that's uh, another topic for another video, um, but uh, just suffice it to say, it's, it's more straightforward uh, doing this. So what I wanna do now is I'm going to give myself a blank slate. So I'm gonna alt click for a new mask. It gives me a black, mask on uh, my darker layer so now i'm just seeing this lighter exposure and i need to create um, a, a mask on this top that's going to bring in this foreground detail so i want something that gives me a nice clean separation along this line and this this kind of ridge line if you will um, and then the center here i really just want to bring in this exposure so if i just disable this mask for a second here this exposure looks great to me so i really want to just fully mask this in i don't need a luminosity mask to get this part of the image but where I do want a luminosity mask is to help me get a nice transition between these two exposures so I'm going to have a fully selected area in the middle and sort of a transition zone haloing around it when I'm done with my masking so uh, first we'll just find a lights mask that gives us a good separation so if I just pick a, uh, a lights mask I'm going to disable this top here I want a mask from the original which is more kind of um, actually yeah, we'll try and we'll try and just mask from this brighter image here. Um, so with the the lights mask, the uh, shadowed area of the rocks are being selected, and that's going to be a problem. I really want to create a nice separation between these two areas of the rock. 
So I'll go to the next level, choose the lights too. And here I see a nice separation. It's pretty much just pure black up above with a nice selection uh, in the transition zones here. Um, not as cleanly selected on the left edge here, but that shouldn't be a problem. We can deal with that. But on the top here, which is really the critical detail, um, there's a very good selection we can work with. So I'm gonna just load that as a selection. And I'm using my Lumenzia panel to do this, but you could do this with my, my free channel-based actions as well. So that would have just been the uh, lights to uh, channel you would have loaded there as a selection. We can see the marching ant, so we've got our selection loaded. I'm just gonna hit uh, Command H to hide those and re-enable the masks here. So we've got a selection that's loaded but hidden and we're ready to start painting. So I'm gonna load up uh, the brush tool and load up my default paints, uh, just hitting the D for default black and white and X to swap white to the foreground. So when I start painting now, it's gonna use the luminosity mask, that lights mask to guide what I'm doing. And if I hit the Q key, I can see my uh, my quick mask here where it's shining through a little bit more is where it's gonna paint. And I like to think of this sort of masking um, with luminosity masks as sort of like um, bowling with bumpers. Um, not sure if that translates outside the US, but uh, imagine uh, going to a bowling alley um, and when the kids play, you uh, put a huge balloon in the gutter so it's impossible to uh, go out of the intended area. And that's really what luminosity masks are gonna do for us here is it's gonna give us um, a nice solid guide so I can only paint where I wanna put the paint here. So I don't have to go in and get really fancy with the mask. The luminosity masks are gonna do exactly what I need. So, all right, so I'm gonna load up larger brush here and just start to paint. And I'm gonna undo that because I was actually painting on the actual pixel. So make sure you're painting on your mask and I can just start painting in here. I'm gonna turn up the flow rate to about 10% to work a little more quickly. And we can see that already it's starting to bring back uh, a nice bit of detail in the top of this image. Now I can go over this a few different times and the original luminosity mask um, had you know areas that were more selected than others. If I just keep painting over the same area, then ultimately I'm moving all the pixels that weren't black towards white and we can see the actual mask I'm creating here as I paint. So this is kind of that bowling with bumpers idea. You can see I'm only painting in the areas that were selected by lights too and as I hit things a couple times it starts to lighten up a little bit more so I can really hit this edge here and build a nice selection. Now I am starting to see a little bit of a selection on the inside here so I don't really want to go too far up there I'm gonna back off a little bit and I'm gonna use my brush again but I'm just gonna be a little bit more careful and I could just paint black up there to get rid of that if I want to so we're gonna get this to a pretty good point here um, just knowing that we're just trying to create separation here it's not gonna look exactly the way we want just yet um, because we're you know, we're ultimately destroying some contrast by darkening the lightest areas, but leaving the dark areas alone. So um, that's kind of compressing the highlights into the shadows. I'm gonna get rid of my mask by hitting Command D, switch to black, and I do wanna just quickly touch up that little edge there. Probably doesn't matter, but I'm just being a little bit of a perfectionist. So we've got this nice separation in the mask, and we can see here as we turn this layer on and off that we've really brought down uh, you know the top of this image here and, and already things look a lot better than they did but it's it's a little flat in here for my taste um, and it doesn't quite look natural to me so what I'm gonna do is now that I've got a good edge um, I just need to now stay within this edge so as long as I'm painting down here everything I'm doing is safe and not adjusting up above so I'm just gonna load up white paint with no uh, no luminosity mask at all and just start to manually brush in these areas. I'm gonna turn down the opacity a little bit. It's gonna slow me down, or sorry, the flow rate. Uh, it's gonna slow me down a little bit, but um, you know, subtlety is important here. You don't wanna to go too fast. Um, and if I wasn't doing this for a demo, I would turn it down even more, be a little bit more precise. Um, but uh, you can already see that uh, bringing in the rest of this darker exposure has given me better contrast which I was losing in that original step 
And if we turn, just take a look at our mask here, we can see that all this area here is really kind of fully selected. Um, and in fact, I can even go and just, you know, paint right on the mask here to, to bring things back in. So I know areas like this dark here that is not uh, painted um, is going to lose some contrast. That is to say that uh, this darkest area here didn't get any darker. So if I take a look at that, I may want to bring that in a bit. So I'm just going to keep painting there. So it's really this edge area that I want to make sure I'm getting colored in. I don't want to cross this line and start painting on the top rocks. If I do that, you know, I'm going to darken this top exposure, which I don't want to do. So I'm going to undo that, but just to, to make the point there. And I'm going to go back to my mask, which I like to do a lot. If I know that an area should just be fully painted in, then I will just tend to... Uh, paint right on the mask. For me, it's easier to see what's going on. Sometimes when you look at the finished image, it might look great, um, but your eyes can deceive you a little bit and you can get a better result sometimes by just simply turning on the mask and painting there. So let's see how this edge looks on the right. Um, that actually looks fine. So I think we have a really nice balanced result there and we just made a couple of changes right again. So we um, use the luminosity mask to get this nice transition zone and then kind of blasted the middle here um, to make sure that we retain the contrast by just bringing through the full extent of this darker exposure and then just blending at the edges. So this already looks really nice. Uh, we're gonna do a couple of finishing steps here. Uh, for one, um, I do wanna add a vignette, this rock, uh, even though I wanted to lighten it up, it's actually lighter than I want. Um, and so in Lumenzia, I can just simply draw a lasso selection and hit the vignette tool. If I was not using Lumenzia, um, I could just simply uh, create a curves adjustment um, with a, a mask on the edges here. So we've created this vignette to just draw the attention back to the center. That really is the focal point of the image. Uh, so again, here's kind of the, you know, without the vignette and with the vignette, which I think just brings nice attention to the center. And then the rock has this great orange glow that I love on the edges. And the rock in the center is just a little bit more bleached out just based on the way the light was reflecting. And I'd love to bring some of this color over here. And so a simple way to do that is just to load up a solid color layer. So literally the whole top here is just one solid color. And obviously uh, I don't want it to look like that. So I'm gonna hide this for a second by just, um, well, I'll just invert the mask here so we can't see it. But what I wanna do is open up the color by double clicking on it and I'm just going to go and pluck out a color by clicking on this orange and hit OK. So now I have a layer that's going to apply paint. If I um, turn off this mask here you can see it's just a solid orange layer and I'm going to bring this paint here and what I want to do is just simply set this to a color blend mode. So, the, so hue brings in the hue, saturation brings in the saturation, color brings in hue and saturation. That's what color means. So when I do this I'm now using an orange color wherever I paint. So we're gonna paint that orange color here. So I just load up my brush again. And I've got a pretty uh, moderate flow. Um, and I can see immediately that's actually way too much. So I'm gonna drop this all the way down to its lowest setting. Uh, again, I just want some more subtlety. And that's even almost a little bit too fast. So I'm actually gonna lower the opacity. I, I really wanna be subtle. So we'll build it up with a few brush strokes. Um, but I'm just going to go and adjust the brush a little bit, kind of freehand gauging where I want to be here. Um, and that looks pretty good to me. So that little adjustment took, you know, this bleached out rock and added this color. It's very subtle, but I think it's a nice, uh, nice little transition. And I'm just going to make sure I've fully got, it. I can see a few little areas here that could be a little more balanced. So I do like to go and use the before and after quite a bit when I'm painting to make sure that I didn't miss something. So at this point, I'd say the image is uh, pretty well done. I could uh, do some more adjustments to contrast if I wanna make a little pop, some other things like that, but the image looks great to me. And so, you know, again, we went from this original image that was blown out and then used our luminosity mask to blend in a darker exposure and then just colored and did this vignette. So. Um, nice, quick, and easy transition, um, and uh, that's how I oftentimes blend multiple exposures using uh, Lumenzia.